Good morning everyone and welcome to the Baby Bunting Live Series. This is Season 2, Episode 12. Tonight we will be discussing everything to do with bathing your newborn child. Many parents are worried about doing this, so we have a Belinda Joyce here tonight to run through and answer all the questions we have and also the questions that you might have as well. Belinda is a midwife and maternal and child health nurse and is also an author of a book called Survive Your survive and enjoy your baby secondly we have our uh, patriot gary who's been on quite a few of these things gary is not an author has not written a book and does not have any criteria whatsoever to be qualified to be here tonight so he's acting as a model we're going to cover all things um, bathing tonight so if you do have any questions please pop it on our comments box and we'll get to it at the end of the session so belinda with, when bathing a child, um, when should you first bathe your newborn child? Yeah, look, when the baby's just been born, there's no need to bath them straight away. Yeah. Um, even if they're just a little bit messy, just cleaning their face and their hands if necessary. But it is be best to wait for 24 hours. Um, newborn babies aren't great at regulating their own temperature, so it's better to let them get used to being outside the womb mm. and... Um, being undressed and redressed and all of those things associated with a bath just okay. aren't necessary straight away. Okay. And will the hospital help with this first bath? Yeah, definitely. So um, in the hospital, the midwives are really used to helping with baths. In fact, we love doing that. So um, they absolutely will help you. Do ask for help, um, but they'll show you how to hold your baby and, and we'll do a bit of that later on in the episode too. Okay. Um, but, but they will definitely help. Okay, and another question, how often should we bathe our newborn child? Babies don't need to be bathed every day, but some parents really love incorporating it into mm. a routine, so there's nothing wrong with doing it every day. Uh, but two or three times a week would be great. Um, they don't really get sweaty like we do. Mm. They don't, um, we're constantly changing their nappies and cleaning their bottom area, so you don't really need to bath them that often. Uh, you can do a top and tail, we call it a top and tail, so it's just a face a face wash just with a, a clean washcloth and some water um, and do their hands as well because they can get a bit grubby and then um, obviously the nappy area and then they're good to go for a few days. Okay, so when bathing, what would the duration be? What's the ideal duration? Is oh, wow. there an ideal duration? It, it's tricky to say. Some babies really love it. Early on, when the baby's not great at regulating their own temperature, it's probably best to keep them quite short. But if your baby's enjoying it and they're a little bit older, keep going with the bath if you're all enjoying it. That's absolutely fun, but um, that's absolutely fine, I should mm, say. Yeah. But, you know, five, yeah. it should be fun. Yeah. Five to ten minutes is probably plenty. Okay. Yeah. And whilst bathing, is there any particular considerations we need to take into account for a newborn baby? Yeah, with a newborn baby, you'll have the umbilical stump um, so where their belly button is going to form um, often to start with there'll be a little plastic clamp on there mm. and just washing around that with a soft cloth a soft wash washcloth or even a cotton wool ball is all that you need to do and no special products need to be put on there okay I guess the other thing is with their hair if they've got lots of hair it's great to rinse out any bath products out of their hair um, but otherwise no not really Okay, so with um, the bathing in general, um, what available options do we have um, that baby bunting supply and sell yes. that we can uh, use while bathing our child? Yeah, so there's heaps of different bath equipment that you can choose from and sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. But looking at what you've got in your home as well to start with will really help and ask friends and family what yep. they've used. Um, but something like a, a small baby bath, oh, I'll just move this, so a small baby bath, These something like this can just be placed on their kitchen bench. Um, you want a room that's really warm, at this time of year it's actually easier um, than, than in winter. In winter you might have to really think about where you're going to do the bathing. Um, something like this on the kitchen bench or you can get it with the stand like this one's got which is fabulous. Yeah. Um, your baby, when they're very small, will fit in here and they will keep being able to fit in here for a few months. And then if you were going to move up to something like a standard built-in bath, um, that would work fine. And we do have a great device for that as well. 
So something like this can go into the bath and help hold and support your baby, but it's not, you still do need to support them yourself as well. Um, but this can just help with your back um, and giving you um, a bit of extra support. And then so many people um, don't actually have a big, large bath in their house. So with apartments and smaller places, more and more places I think now um, really just have the shower. And as your baby gets bigger or even from newborn, you can use something like the Charlie chair. So the Charlie chair is a really great option because it can be in the shower and you could be outside of the shower but still just close by using, you know, a hands, a hand, sort of handheld yep. hose or something like that. Or you could be in the shower having the shower at the same time as well and have your hands free at times but also be playing with baby and washing baby at the same time. So it's a really great invention. It can be... Um, reclined even further for a newborn and then as your baby grows there's actually different um, spaces to adjust the, the harness for a larger baby to make it safe as well and anything like this you would always use with a harness and you would never leave the baby mm. on their own in that device. Okay so this one is there a Gary chair? Can he use a Charlie chair we, as well? We can that, call it a like, Gary okay. chair. No at all. <laughs> so another really important question that I didn't ask before, and I know a lot, it's top of mind for a lot of parents, is what's the ideal temperature of the water in the uh, bath? Yes, that's a good question. So around 37, 38 degrees is ideal, but that's a little bit hard to tell mm. You know, when the, when the water gets to that temp temperature, and it's really important that we don't scold the baby. So... Um, just using the inside of your wrist or your elbow into the bath water um, like this is usually enough to know if the water's warm, it's probably fine. If it's hot, it's too hot. Um, and don't use your actual hands to test because your hands are used to touching hot things and they won't um, recognise that if it was too hot. There's also a great device for that, which I know something like this really helped me it's the rubber ducky with the little thermometer in it and you can place that in the bath and it will tell you the temperature of the water and it gives you just that little bit more yeah. certainty and there's a whole heap of other devices as well that can okay. be really helpful well the temperature one's a good one because we're used to doing that anyway aren't we yes so we are these it's, days it's easy to do <laughs> um, with the actual water obviously we've got water in the bath should we be adding anything else to the water for the baby yeah look for the first bath i think it's nice to use just plain water. That's all that's really required. Even if your baby's a little bit messy, um, that usually will work fine. And then from then on, choosing a product that has um, a neutral pH, um, soap-free and um, fragrance-free is really important because um, that's much better for your, your baby's skin. Um, and just small amounts in the bath water is all that's required. Okay, so once we've had the bath, yeah got baby out of the bath moisturizing is the, the thing to do or do you need to do that yes it's really great to moisturize newborn babies many newborn babies are really dry after mm. birth so drying them off as um, sort of quickly as you can and then putting on again a ph balanced and um, fragrance free Safe. type of moisturizer um, from top to toe can be a really great option as well you can use some of the bath oils as well in the bath to help with moisture too Okay, yeah. so here in Australia we've got a very high rate of eczema. We do. What, what can we do to combat that yeah. somewhat? Look, in Victoria especially, we're known as the eczema capital of the world. Um, and there's a lot of theories around that, but sticking with the, the bath products that really are made mm. for newborns and young babies um, can really help. And moisturising, moisturise, moisturise, moisturise. If you think your baby's dry, moisturise. And also, when we're talking about products and things, it's really important to talk to your GP or your maternal child health nurse or your midwife about what would be best for your baby because some babies aren't dry, um, many are, but not no. all babies. So just keeping in mind that you're getting um, advice for your own specific baby. Sure, okay, yeah. great. Well, thanks for running through those options that many parents have got. Mm -hmm. Would you be able, Belinda, to do a bit of a demonstration, right. please, with <laughs> yep. Gary, whichever I Gary? I will, I'll use yeah. this Gary over here. So when you're bathing a baby, it 
it can be frightening the first time. I do remember doing my first baby bath and being quite concerned. Um, so there's a few different ways you can hold your baby. So cradling the, the head and the neck because they won't have that neck strength and then bringing your fingers around, uh, around the upper arm like that so that he can't actually fall down under the water because you'll be cradling and just bringing your other hand in under here can work really well too. And then plunging him into the bath um, and having some depth in the water if possible so that the water actually does come up and cover him a little. Many newborn babies will really scream at this point so using something like a washcloth over them and making sure it's really wet and warm and keeping on wetting it can make them feel really secure and comforted like um, as if they were wrapped. It just really helps a newborn. If they're really hating it though just a really quick wash over. You don't have to do anything too formal or special, just a little wash over the face, do the ears, um, move your, your way down the body, but leave the bottom and nappy area till the last because it's the dirtiest part. So just washing, you know, under the arms and things. If there's some vernix, the creamy white substance on your baby still from birth, leave that on. Um, don't try and wash it off. It's actually really good for the skin as a barrier. So it will wear off by itself over those early weeks. So just washing all the way down, even into the um, toes, because over time your baby does get lots of bits of fluff and cottons and things in their toes. Um, and then around the nappy area last. Um, that's really all you need to do. It doesn't have to be, it should be fun. If your baby's not enjoying it, just a really quick wash over. If you don't get every area, it's not going to hurt at all. You can get onto the, the other parts next time. And as you get more, um, I guess, get really comfortable doing this, you can try things like rolling them over onto their tummy and things like that. But early on, you don't need to do any of that. Mm. And then I guess when you're taking them out, it's really important, let you know the drips drip off, but then try and wrap them up really fast. So I'll just quickly do that over here. Something like these hooded towels can be a really great option as well because it really does keep their head um, nice and warm and dry and then you can just finish drying off, off like that. Fantastic. So you've got to have fun while you're doing it. You do. Yeah, it should be fun. Bit of a bonding session as well for, for mum and bubs. Yeah, absolutely. So what if the mother's actually had a caesarean? Yeah. Is, there, is there a best process or best practice for that? Look, if mum is doing the bathing, it's really good to make sure that the bath's in it at a good level, that they're not really in a lot of pain, mm. um, that they're able to reach things and probably with a partner or a support person actually helping them. But what I've found is that often the dads or the partners love getting involved in, in this process yep. and I'm, I'm sure you did. In my experience, um, two children and was involved solely, I'd like to say solely but I think <laughs> my wife was standing behind me, but yep. you know, you get to bond with the child and it's also a really... Uh, it's sort of a, a ceremonial thing for the, for the dad as well, and it gives mum a chance to, when you get home, to go and have a, a rest or go and do something different and take the focus off and the pressure off mum as well. So yeah. definitely recommend it, guys. Yeah, I've found that the dads often take this over and really, mm. really enjoy that time that they have with the baby. And um, so often the mum has got so many hours of the day mm. directly with the baby. It's a really great time for partners. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So with your bath, Belinda, what's the best time of the day to bath your child? Now, this will very much depend on your baby. So some babies love the bath. Um, they might not love those first few, but then they start to love it and they'll kick around and they'll start talking to you or, you know, giggling and really enjoying it and it will rev them up. Those babies can really have their bath any time through the day, but I would avoid it being a bedtime bath because it's just going to rev them up. Yeah. Whereas some babies, I don't know about you, but you get in the bath and it can be quite relaxing. Mm. Um, many babies will get very relaxed and sleepy and it's a perfect um, thing to include in your bedtime routine because they, they're already um, ready to go to sleep when they get out of the bath. So you just do a, quite a, um, a quiet dress, dry, dry them down, dress them and just keep everything quiet and then put them to bed. It can work really, really well. Okay, great. Any other tips for a newborn bath for um, their first bath or their first few baths? Yeah, I think um, 
don't be expecting it to be something really special for those first few baths. I did find I've got four children and all four of them disliked their first bath and I was really excited about them, but they were not. So, um, but they did come to really enjoy their bath after that. So just in that, that early time, many babies just take a little bit of time to warm up to the idea. Um, I think that's all. <laughs> So yeah. water's important, so just a, a plain water bath for beginning? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay, yep, definitely. Great. All right, so what we've got uh, at the moment is um, we're just about ready to finish up. So if anybody has got any questions, please shoot them through and uh, we'll answer as many as we can um, before the end of the session or, or post the session as well. So thank you very much, Belinda, for taking time to uh, out of your busy schedule to come and visit us at Baby Bunting and educate us and also our viewers as well. Much appreciated. My pleasure. And thank you, Gary and Gary as well. And uh, just a safety message yes. as well. I'd just like to mention that we need to make sure that any time we've got our baby in the bath that we stay with them. I know I mentioned it before, but um, just with water safety. Yeah, yeah. Be really careful. And even the bath, the water in the bath as well, we need to yes. remember that as well. Yeah. Yep. Great advice. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much, guys.